In this video, we're going to complete example three. Both questions require us to calculate a repayment using either Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. In question A, Jane has $8,600 in her bank account, but she needs a $30,000 deposit to buy a home. Her bank account receives an interest rate of 2.7% per annum compounded monthly. What monthly repayment does she need to deposit into the bank so that she can reach her goal of $30,000 after a period of two years? So we'll start with our interest rate. Our interest rate is 2.7% per annum, but we're compounding this monthly, so we need to divide this by 12. And whenever we calculate a rate, we always divide them by 100 so that it converts it to a decimal. Next, we need to know the number of time periods. So she wants to save up her deposit after a period of two years. So NPER, the number of time periods, is 2 times 12, since we're doing this monthly. 2 times 12 is 24 time periods. Next, we want our present value. Our present value, or PV, is going to be $8,600, because this is the amount of money that she starts with in her bank account. Now we need to look at our present value and think to ourselves, is this a positive amount or is this going to be a negative amount? To figure this out, we need to talk about ingoings and outgoings, and I like to use the picture of the wallet. The amount we have is $8,600, and she's basically put this into some sort of an investment account because eventually she wants to save up and have $30,000. Because of that, our $8,600 is an outgoing. She's taken this money out of her wallet and put it into an investment account. I like to think of it as money that you can't spend. It's money that's out of your wallet. You can't go to the shops and spend it. She can't spend it because it's in her investment account. Because of that, we need to write that present value is a negative amount. All right. So what's next? When we look at our formula here, we've got our future value as well. And we can see that our future value is going to be $30,000. It's a future value because she hopes to have this amount of money in the future. What about the type? Remember that type zero means repayments at the end of the month or the end of the time period, and type one are repayments at the beginning of the time period. Now, when you read the question, there's nothing that says anything about repayments at the beginning or the end of the period. If that's the case, just assume that they're putting them at the end of the period. Type 0 is the default repayment method. Now, is the future value a positive or a negative amount? Let's look at the wallet again. Is it an ingoing or is it an outgoing? And you could technically say that it's neither. The $30,000 isn't going into your wallet, and the $30,000 isn't money that's coming out of your wallet but eventually it will go into your wallet. Because of that, our future value is going to be a positive amount. All right, we're ready to go into Microsoft Excel and calculate our repayment using the PNT command. We'll pick a cell, let's pick C10, doesn't matter which cell you pick. We write equals PNT, open our brackets, and the first thing they want is our rate. We didn't actually work out our rate, but we had a calculation. So we're going to write 2.7. We're going to divide this by 12 using the forward slash, and then we're going to divide this by 100 using the forward slash again, comma. Next, we need the number of time periods, which is 24, comma. Next, we need our present value, which is negative, $8,600.
comma, and then our future value is a positive amount of thirty thousand dollars, comma, and then our type it's type zero for the end of the time period, and then enter, and we get the amount of negative eight hundred and forty nine dollars forty six. So if we go back to this screen, we're going to write down that our repayment PMT is going to be negative $849.46. So if Jane wants to save up $30,000 over a period of two years, she needs to deposit $849.46 into her bank account at the end of each month. Now, in case you're wondering why it's negative, it's because our repayment is an outgoing. At the end of each month, Jane takes $849.46 out of her wallet and puts it into her investment account. Now, we need to remember that, yes, it might be negative for Microsoft Excel or for Google Sheets, but when we're talking about questions like this in real life, we don't talk about repayments being negative. In fact, we don't use PMT to represent a repayment. So I'm going to change this a little bit. When we talk about repayments, we use the pronumeral capital D, and we don't talk about them being negative. So I'm going to get rid of the negative because this solution is not for Microsoft Excel. It is not for Google Sheets. This solution is for us to answer this question. All right, moving on to question B. After saving her deposit, Jane decides to get a home loan for $420,000. The bank has offered her an interest rate of 3.2% per annum compounded monthly. What regular repayment must she make in order to pay off her loan in 30 years? So once again, we're going to use this repayment formula and we need to talk about the rate first. Our rate is 3.2%. But remember it's being compounded monthly. We need to divide this by 12 and also divide it by 100 so that we can convert this to a decimal. Next we want to know the number of time periods or NPER. This is over a period of 30 years and because we're doing it monthly we need to times this by 12 which will give us 360 time periods or 360 months. We also need to know what our present value is. So the loan that Jane is getting is $420,000. The bank is going to lend her this money at the beginning and Jane is going to pay it off over a period of 30 years. So the present value is going to be $420,000. Now we need to talk about whether this is a negative amount or a positive amount. So we need to know whether it's an ingoing or an outgoing. Now it's definitely not an outgoing. Jane is not taking $420,000 out of her pocket. She can't afford to do it. So is it an ingoing? I mean, it's not really money that's going into her wallet. It's going into the house. But technically we see it as money going into the wallet. It's money that's going to Jane. It might be going into the house. So maybe we could imagine the house as her wallet. So it's actually a positive amount, which kind of goes against what you would think. Because when you think of a loan, you think it would be negative. But in this case, it's positive because it's money that's been sent to Jane. What's next? We've got our future value. Whenever it's a loan that you're paying off, your future value is going to be $0 because by the end of the loan you want to owe nothing. Now when you look at the question, there's nothing that talks about making repayments at the beginning of the month or at the end of the month. If that's the case, we just assume it's at the end of the month. So we're going to use type zero. So let's now go to Microsoft Excel and calculate our repayment now. Equals PNT, open our brackets, and the first thing they want us to type in is the rate. We've written the rate as a calculation. It's 3.2, then divide 12, so forward slash 12, then divide 100, forward slash 100, comma. Next, we want the number of time periods, which is 360. 
comma. Next, we want the present value, which is a positive amount, $420,000. Then comma. Next, we want our future value, which is zero. And then we want our type, which is zero as well. You might remember that if the future value is zero and the type is zero, you don't have to type those zeros in. Then enter. And we get negative $1,816.36. We already spoke about repayments being negative in question A, so we're quite happy with the solution. We expected it to come out negative. Now for our solution, I'm going to write down my repayment as a positive amount. I'm going to write it as $1,816.36. And the reason we're going to leave it as a positive amount is because when we talk about repayments, we talk about them being a positive amount. We don't use a negative. This is something we use just to type commands into Google Sheets or into Excel. So from this we learn that if Jane wants to borrow $420,000 from the bank, she's going to have to make repayments of close to $2,000 every month. And this is really useful because this is what people want to know. If you're going to go out and buy a house, you want to know if you can afford the repayments. Can you afford to pay this much money every month? Anyway, that concludes our video on example three. Remember to read the description below for links to workbooklets that relate to this video.